Hello everyone, now it's my turn to uh, captivate your attention, well not really mine, but uh, to welcome you once again. And um, the idea of this gathering is uh, uh, for it to stay an informal sort of meeting, uh, in the sense that we want this to feel like a family uh, meeting, we want this to feel homely, because we want our institute to feel like a home to you, uh, whoever are interested in discussing theology with Orthodox people, discussing the Orthodox faith, meeting other Orthodox people or indeed other Christian uh, people here in Cambridge. And um, of course uh, th this was the main idea for, for you to sort of interact and get to know one another, for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us a little bit. Uh, at least, especially for those who have come for the first time uh, to our institute. Um, but uh, we have, uh, as you will have read in the schedule of today's event, we have uh, uh, a guest speaker for you, uh, who, uh, uh, this being a very friendly event, we've invited a very dear friend of ours, um, who uh, happens to be a geneticist and an anthropologist, and he's also uh, an Orthodox faithful and a Christian uh, uh, thinker. So um, I th we thought that perhaps if he could share with us a few of his thoughts on what he does, and perhaps on how he could relate that to his faith, his Christian faith, um, and then we could also, of course, help him uh, by asking questions uh, at the end a little bit. But we thought this would be a nice stimulant for conversations over the sandwiches and the, um, uh, the, the juice and the wine, and uh, so that we, while we have a festive uh, atmosphere, at the same time, perhaps Mircea Iliescu uh, will give us uh, some food for thought uh, for the hour to come. Uh, Mircea is uh, an old friend of ours and an old friend of our institute. He is uh, relatively, he's becoming well known in Romania these days, as he appears on lots of um, television programs. He is uh, invited by uh, many uh, news anchors to um, uh, present a scientific sort of point of view on various issues. So without further ado, Mircea, I will prepare the chair here for you. And perhaps uh, a sort of uh, encouragement for you all to find a comfortable seat somewhere and uh, start our conversation. Uh, thank you for this invitation. It's very nice to be here with old friends, as the final saying. Um, I'm not sure there's much to say after this beautiful service, and anyway, uh, I'm in the way of the refreshments, so I'll try to be brief. It's never a good idea to be in the way of the refreshments. Um, <laughs> I mean, when Rezvan asked me to talk about, I usually don't talk about faith in general, I find, it, I find it's my faith and I don't really talk too much about it, but when he asked me to talk about science and faith, I thought I could do it. I then thought I'm a Romanian, so anyway, we can give an opinion on anything, so I thought I, I could try to say a few words about it. So first of all, I'll probably say a few words about what I do, since I do very different things, really, like in comparison to Rezvan and Dragos. Um, and then I might suggest a few places where science and theology are similar or dissimilar. Uh, and hopefully then we might have a friendly conversation. It's always good this conversation to be friendly, it's always a good idea. Um, so I'm a geneticist, as Rosvan was saying, I'm a biologist. By training, um, I was always interested mainly in people, so... Um, I thought biology would be a good idea. I thought medicine is very difficult or too difficult for me, although I'm still thinking about that aspect. Uh, but I decided to do biology. I did molecular biology quite a few years ago, and then the road led me towards my PhD. I did I tried neuroscience, where I was working with little mouse and mice embryos to try to understand how the nervous system develops. Then I tried immunology. And then I decided that uh, doing genetics and anthropology, so uh, basically evolutionary genetics, so trying to use our biology to understand our evolutionary past and our diversity would be a great idea and a perfect fit, fit to my interests. 
because my PhD supervisor suggested I could go to India to take samples from people, so basically saliva to ask people to spit in tubes and to measure their skin color to understand the diversity and the evolution of skin color. I thought that's perfect for me. Uh, because although, although being a biologist, I was always, always had an interest in people and I thought staying in the lab all day doesn't suit me, so that's what I did and at the moment I'm interested in these broad ideas of or in questions on how we are different, uh, where does human diversity come from, biologically speaking, uh, and I'm trying to do all sorts of studies, for example, on Roma minority gypsies in Romania to try to understand their evolution and their diversity looking at skin color, but also at immunity, why do people react differently to pathogens? So these are the questions I'm kind of interested in my scientific life when I have time for that, except in addition to my family life and other interests. Um, where do I think science and uh, theology meet? Um, I think they can meet in different, in many ways, in many aspects. Uh, one thing where they're, where they're similar, I think, is that um, it's the mystery and the curiosity. So basically, I think both theologians and scientists are very curious about trying to explain different things. Um, and scientists as well are very interested in mysteries and how do you explain them. For example, in evolution, in our field, we're always very interested to understand the why. Why did that thing happen 100,000 years ago? Why did, why did the other thing? So I think in this aspect, the fact that we always seek to understand uh, things or mysteries, uh, we're quite similar. In other words, we're not that different after all. Um, because I think, although I'm not a theologian, I think theologians all also have very big questions and they try to go deep to understand them through studying the Bible or other texts. Uh, so that would be one thing. Um, I told you I'll be brief, I'm not gonna talk for too long. So uh, the, other, the other one would be impact and purpose, I think both theologians and scientists see themselves as people who would like to have an impact uh, and that they do what they do with a purpose. Probably we could argue that anyone does what they do with a purpose, but I think a scientist you do have a purpose. You do try to explain things and you have an aim and you think that would, lead, would have an impact. And I think as theologians you do hope the way you understand the Bible, right? But I, I guess that's why it has an impact. So that would be another thing. And we can discuss any of these matters if you find them interesting or if, I mean, these are just some ideas of mine which could be right or wrong. And that, I, I'll get to the third point where I think theologians and scientists are similar. I think some tend to have, or many tend to have big egos and probably there's this idea that we think we're usually right or are like what we know that's the right thing, uh, so we know better than the others. Um, I think many scientists do that, and I think probably many theologians do that as well, I would, I would speculate. Um, and I think some humility would be very good for both things um, in general. When you talk about interfaith relations, in the case of theologians, or when in case of scientists, when biological anthropologists would tell you that such social anthropologists are not taught to really quantitative real things and where social anthropologists would tell you that biological anthropologists don't really understand anything about humans or the world. So I think the, some humility here is good for every, would be good for everyone. And uh, the other thing where I think the similarities is the fact that we do need the people. Uh, I don't think you can do this in isolation. Some scientists would suggest you can. Uh, I, I would suggest also based on all my work about explaining science to the people and also during the last pandemic when it was crucial to try to explain to people about vaccines and science and DNA and other things that you have to have people on board and you have to... Science has a purpose if people understand it and if you have them around with, you have them with you. And I would suggest for theologians should be the same. I mean, it is for the people. It is for people to understand and for theologians to explain and to reveal things to people. So I would suggest that um, this is something very important that we probably have in common. Um, where there's a difference, and I think here many people, I mean, that there will be, you could write books on it, is, of course, the method. So uh, scientists would usually suggest that the only way to do things is if you write a study, you have introduction and you have methods and results and a discussion. 
Um, but the, met the methodology is the crucial bit where um, that's the experimental method, that's the way science has been built. So you have to prove things and you have to have some methods and some experiments to prove them. And then maybe you have a discussion where you draw some conclusions but not speculating too much because it's all based on the data and on the evidence. And that's the right thing to do, to do it and uh, it brought countless uh, benefits to the world, I would suggest. Uh, I think here there's a difference bit because I think in the case of theology it's rather a long introduction and maybe not necessarily a method but you have the results that you see them and there's very important discussion and I think and as someone who also goes to church um, orthodox although I'm married to a Catholic so I, I don't necessarily like to put myself in a box um, not Protestant Catholic so we'll, we'll, we all have limits here as you can see uh, that's a joke that's a joke um, I think as someone who always, I, I don't see any purpose any time to try to explain to someone to try to prove anything about my faith. I, I really, that, that's where I see science and theology very different. So I, I, if someone wants to argue with me about whether, whether Jesus, no Jesus, I mean, I don't, I don't see any point in doing that, to be honest, because that's not the scientific thing. So with science, I could argue if you want to argue with, that, with me how close we are to the chimpanzees, I can offer you countless evidence that we're very close to the chimpanzees and we have a common ancestor. But that's, that'll be the science bit, but in terms of theology, I would see no point in doing this argument because I think they come from very different places and I think that that's always the problem and the sticking point when you want to do science and religion together because there's like almost two different languages and I think it's right to have two different languages. Um, yeah. So I think I don't see a problem in that. And I would then continue to say that maybe I'll just suggest a couple of things where I see an intersection in my work. Uh, so I don't necessarily think about theology all the time in my work, but I think scientists who tend to have some faith uh, are interested in trying to combine the two. And personally, I'm quite, I'm, I always see very beautiful things some are random in nature, of course, I mean, but other things, uh, and when I think about human origins and how humans evolved at some point in Africa a long, long time ago, I see quite miraculous bits there, and it, it's probably one of the areas where I always think in terms of also some mystic aspect into it, although there's very scientific debate to it and how we evolved from a common ancestor to what we call monkeys now, although I suggest we're pretty... And if you don't believe me, you can always go and, and look face to face to a gorilla or a, or a chimpanzee and you'll see what I mean when I say that science and faith can meet, I mean, in my opinion, when you think about these big questions. Uh, and the other thing where I've seen an intersection in my work is, um, I'm going to finish with this, so refreshments are coming, um, is I think, um, as an anthropologist, especially when you think about, I like to think of humans and human populations, um, this made me think a lot also in terms of religion, how centric we are sometimes. So how we think, we think some things are exclusive to some populations or not the others. So if you do genetics and evolution and anthropology and you think about all the world populations from Papua New Guinea to South America, uh, you see many fascinating aspects and you see how different we are and how, although we're extremely diverse, we're all very similar at the same time. Um, and this broad, this kind of um, broad framework is something that sometimes li I like and makes me think in terms of theology as well. Uh, the example I always think and I always find quite funny from a non-theological point of view is the whole how we have so many saints in Europe. I mean, it's like Europe is full of saints. And of course we have no saints from Papua New Guinea, but that's because we don't know about them. And, and I, I think this is a very interesting point when you think about theology, but also about science. And it's the same with science. Initially, all the genetic studies we did were on Europe. So Europe is always the center. Uh, but it's not. And that's why when you study what I do and you think about the world and how we all came from somewhere and we related, uh, it makes you think also in theological terms. And, uh, and I would probably joke to say that Jesus was probably one of the first anthropologists. He was also the first psychologist. Or, but also when he he talks about nations, you know, because he talks about Samaritans, and I think that's quite interesting how he introduces this idea that you have different populations, that we're all 
I mean, there's not one that's chosen, and I think this is really interesting, also from anthropologists and geneticists' point of view. And uh, I think I'll end here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, if there are any questions, perhaps we could uh, either uh, ask Mircea to respond now or wait for the sandwiches and ask us to sort of grab him somewhere in the room. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a hand out there. Oh, there okay. Yes. Um, we're gathered here as a community of faith. And, uh, as you describe your career, most of your contact is with other scientists. When you are in conversation with someone who's a scientist, but also a a uh, oh, no, I just lost the word, someone who believes in science religiously and excludes religion, how do you bring your faith to bear in such a conversation? Uh, I think that's what I was trying to say. I, I don't have this guy. I don't. I don't see. I'm not trying to conv convince any fellow scientists or any... Um, I mean, it's interesting. I had sometimes some discussions, but I, I think I, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I, I just can tell them my perspective, that I think, in my perspective, things work together. They, they, they fit. Okay. Um, and yes, and I think the only argument I always have to scientists or anyone who that they shouldn't take their field too seriously or too religiously. I like, I like this word, because I don't so like... scientism is the... Scientism, is the or, or, or I mean, on the religious side, we have plenty of examples in the, in the same way, where Jesus talks about the inclusiveness and everything, and then people of religion decide that it's all exclusive. So, it's similar, people who are less tolerant or less open-minded, I think it's similar, because, yeah, we have scientists who... Yeah, they take it too religiously, and I just tell them, I suggest to them that if you're a scientist, you should be very open-minded to any kind of idea. That's how I am usually, although I have my ideas, but I will listen to any idea, and I will tell them, in my opinion, things fit, they don't exclude it in themselves. So I haven't, I think that the only issue I have, and I don't have long discussions with this, is with people who try to use science to disprove religion, and I don't see... I don't see that point really, I mean, because you're not going to disprove it scientifically. I mean, that's, yeah, I don't, I don't see how. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I used to live in Czech Republic and I'm thinking about the Roma because in that context uh, there's a lot of sensitivity about the Roma being regarded as inferior to the majority white population. And I'm wondering if your research is, is sort of accepted by the Roma rather than them fearing that this is another way of... Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my research means they have to decide if they want to give me blood and like samples, yeah. so yeah. they should be pretty happy with my research. Yeah, I mean, my, I go, the idea is I, I meet all sorts of people and talk to them about it. No, so we're trying... It's something of benefit to them anyway in the long run because we don't have genetic data from Romas and to know about genetic diseases and in general they should so they've been neglected in any kind of biological study. So it's nothing it's actually very important for them as a community, but yeah, no, we're trying to do it as properly as possible and uh, we have very interesting discussions I have with them when I meet. Yeah. But it's the same, it's a very interesting the same. Yeah, if you, I mean yeah, if you think about theology and how it should be, people should be all it should all be inclusive, and uh, it's interesting yeah, how in science is the same sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but I'm trying to do it as properly as possible. Oh, well, I didn't get that. I no, 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 no. But it's an interesting one. Of course, uh, the 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 default is basically they should. Why should they trust them? Should they trust anyone yeah. who not? I mean, yeah. what's this guy from Cambridge or anywhere else? What? Why? Why? Why should they collaborate with them? Because basically they've been so discriminated and being treated like this for hundreds of years, so, and I can see their point, I and mean, that's the default of position, which makes some sense. Yeah. Have you uh, ever asked them what the center of their life, what the, the main sort of valuable point and uh, moral sense? No, I, I, don't, I haven't discussed these things with them, no, I'm not, I have friends who do social anthropology and they've been living with Romans in their houses, but that's not, 
uh, I don't discuss these things. I just uh, try to explain my study. I mean, I go through some NGOs that work with them and I observe and I just try to see where and when we could collaborate. Yeah. Because not only they uh, don't try to blend in, to, to, um, uh, they, they like to be different, they like to, to yeah. show that they're different. Like, yeah, I mean, in a sense, I always like to relate to them because I always like to be different as well, so yeah, I, but, I find but, it quite yeah, but, <laughs> what the What the origin of I, No, I don't know, that's a very interesting question, I don't know. Yes? Uh, I understand from what you said that, that theology and science ask uh, similar questions. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, at least the main questions. Uh, do you think that the answers provided by theology and science are compatible? There is a long, long discussion that goes back a uh, uh, long time. Uh, that uh, someone cannot be a scientist and uh, a Christian or yeah. a religious person at the same time. I mean, it's an interesting one. I think many scientists yeah. are not religious, but... Uh, I don't, I don't, no, I don't mean... I don't no, no, but, 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 but I also think I know quite a few scientists who are religious. I mean, it happens... Oh, yes, it's it just so happens that quite a few geneticists tend to be, but... Uh, I, I don't know if that... I mean, to me, they work. To me, the answers work together. I mean, I don't see... Any and I don't see personally any incompatibility with the fact that we're very related to the beautiful chimpanzees with, the, with mm -hmm. my deal. I, I don't see it personally. I probably have some questions or issues of how we decide who has a soul and who doesn't have, but that's, I'm not an expert in theology. And, uh, yeah. But I, I don't see that I, personally, it works for me. But uh, probably some people say that some of the answers are not always the same. Yeah. I think probably we should leave some time for mingling and um, refreshments and refreshments and talking with one another. There are plenty of sandwiches. Uh, well, okay, maybe not plenty, but quite a few. So do help yourself to those and to the nibbles uh, available. Um, and uh, yes, do do continue this very interesting conversation among yourselves. And uh, thank you very much, Mircha, for agreeing to come and for answering our questions. Thank you very much.